everybody. Uh, this is Elizabeth, and um, we are now doing episode 8 of Tea with Jesus. And my goodness, how the weeks have <clears throat> just really flown by. I want to start out um, today with um, my devotional by asking you to please pray for someone. There is a woman named Starry Hilder who has a pretty big following on YouTube. She's a, um, a homesteader, I think in Idaho somewhere and um, has a lot of fun videos talking about different things you can do to have a self-sustaining lifestyle. She's also a really committed Christian and um, has been really open about her faith in, in the Lord. Um, quirky and interesting lady. Um, her name is Starry Hilder. Um, she was just in a very, very serious bicycle accident last Saturday and um, was thrown over handlebars and landed kind of right on her face on the asphalt. And so um, it's by the grace of God that her neck, which was broken, um, apparently did not sever her spinal cord. And so we're really grateful for that. But um, I would like to ask for prayer for Starry. And if you could just really keep her in prayer. And I'm so grateful that the Lord's with her. She did put a, a video out that where she's just speaking and I know God is watching out for her and she's there with her husband and she's got friends that have been able to help care for her. So I just wanted to just to have us all join together to keep her in prayer. It was a very, very serious accident. Okay, um, I think one of the things that's really uh, important for us to kind of understand is that in reality there's not a whole lot of neutral ground in life. And there's not a whole lot of neutral ground at all when it comes to um, how God wants to do things in our lives. Um, basically, what He saves us from is very serious. What He wants to keep us from falling into or becoming involved in can be very damaging, very painful, and very, very difficult here on earth and in eternity. But what He saves us for is really glorious. Um, it, it's not some, oh my goodness, we're not just someday in heaven going to be floating around on clouds playing out of tune harps. No, 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 nothing like that. Uh, we're talking about a vibrant, incredible life with Him that starts when we accept Jesus as our Savior now and will go on into eternity in a wonderful way. So, um, I think understanding that God really truly wants to give us great things and he also wants to forgive us in great ways it makes me want to talk a little bit tonight about understanding what grace and mercy are and um, we hear the words a lot but do we really understand um, what what they really mean I think that if we really see grace and mercy for what they are it's going to help us to see the depth the depth of the love that God has for us. Basically, if we want to define things to keep it kind of simple, grace is receiving what we have not earned, and mercy is not receiving what we have earned. And let's look at some scripture here. I want to start out in Romans 5. And, um, talk a little bit about how merciful God has been toward us. Okay, this is going to be Romans 5. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, and then I'm going to read verse 8. B being justified means that we are no longer having to take the penalty for our sin, for what we have done wrong. Therefore, having been justified by faith, this is chapter 5, verse 1. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. All that God brings us and gives us through His grace. And then if we go down to verse 8, it says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that is, 
you know, a little introduction to his mercy also in that scripture that we did not deserve it, but Jesus died for us that we could be forgiven and not receive the just penalty of our own sin. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 2, verse 9. Um, let me make sure I've got this right. Excuse me, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. When I get to heaven, I won't have to wear trifocals. <clears throat> 12, verse 9. Um, this is, um, Jesus is saying this. Um, and he was speaking it to Paul, who wrote the letters to the Corinthians. And he said to me, Jesus said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul went on to say, Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And so this is grace that gives us strength from the Lord that's made perfect in our weakness. We don't have strength, but Jesus does. And this is grace that gives us strength that's made perfect in weakness. Let's go to Ephesians 2. Here we go. Okay, this will be Ephesians 2, and I'm going to read 4 through 10. It's right here. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For it's by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, because of his great love, we have these exceeding riches of his grace in our life. And then James 4, 6. Right after Hebrews. Okay, James 4, 6. But he gives more grace. Therefore he says that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And um, as we are willing to admit our need of him and be honest with him and have a humble heart, he really wants to give us grace. And I think that the greatest gift of grace that we ever have in our lives is His eternal presence. When we accept Christ, when we tell Him we want His salvation, when we look at Him lifted up on that cross, believing Him and repenting, He comes and dwells in us. And the Holy Spirit is with us. And we will have the very presence of God for eternity. And that is an incredible grace that He has given us. So it's not something we earned while we were yet sinners. It's nothing that we've done to earn the salvation. And it's some, we have to realize that in, as far as His grace and His love and His presence, we're not earning it now. When we have opened our heart to Him, He wants to give us the grace that He has for us. And then mercy is not receiving what we really have earned the penalty that we have deserved. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 16.34. You have 1st and 2nd Kings, and then 1st Chronicles. And let's look there. There we go. I've got this one marked. <laughs> I had it right there. Okay. 1st Chronicles 16.34. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. 
there, that mercy, that willingness to forgive us will endure forever. While we're in the Old Testament, let's go to Lamentations. It's right after Jeremiah. Right after Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Lamentations. My little sister, when we were very young, got a doll that she just really liked. And she wanted to name this little doll after someone in the Bible, so she named him Lamentations. That still is so sweet to me. <laughs> so yes, we had Lamentations at our house. Okay, this is going to be the Book of Lamentations 3 verses 22 through 24. Listen to what happens because of God's mercy. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I hope in Him. His mercies are new every morning. And now let's go to Hebrews 4, 16. I have that one marked. So it says here in Hebrews 4, 16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So I think that if we can just really understand what incredible gifts He has given us, by His grace, which we have not earned, and by His mercy, which means that we're not going to receive the punishment that we really have earned. We can see so much of God's eternal love for us in these two concepts of grace and mercy. I really feel like that I want to take a moment and just share a little portion out of what I call Abba's book. I'm trying to make sure these don't get too long, but I but there's things I just really feel like that I want to be sure we cover. This is not scripture, but I don't feel like there's anything in here the Lord has ever said to me that ever contradicts scripture. And this has just really blessed me, and I wanted to share this with you during this one. I am vast enough to see and care for every life. For everything in the vastness I have created, I can know and care for it all because I am even bigger. I am more intelligent than all of man's accumulation of knowledge or wisdom. My eyes shine with alert intelligence. My love is greater and more sure than any you'll find anywhere else. I am not anxious about loving. I love. My love is simply what it is forever. And it is the most powerful and beautiful song in all of creation. It is the foundation of who I am. Nothing in me functions apart from it. My love, my holiness, the sheer force of my life is a shining fire and glory that would consume everything if I didn't choose to protect my creation. It would consume everything by my sheer intense vitality. I am, and if I roar, the cosmos explodes. If I speak, the earth melts in a consuming fire. I gave man an unspeakably precious gift. I gave all of you spirit. You are eternal. You will always be in my heart, whether ultimately with me or if you choose to be separated from me. You will all forever be in my heart. I have created children that I cannot destroy or cast aside. I love all of you intensely. Within your limited complex lives, I have devoted myself to caring for you and drawing you to myself. If you choose to reject me up until you leave your physical world, then I will let you. I won't force a child to return my love. And anyone separated from me will bear the consequences of willfully refusing my presence and protection. But I will always love each one. I feel deep sorrow for everyone that runs from me and suffers for it. But I also swell with joy and my courts ring with gladness and praise for everyone who is willing to trust me and come home to me. Even before death, those who will come to me are home. 
but oh, the joy each one knows when they can see and experience my presence as they cast aside earthly blindness and deafness and are free to be with me and experience me. It is a moment that I treasure forever. It costs me more than anyone will ever know to make these moments possible, but they are worth it to me every time. He has simply chosen to love us and to give us the free will to choose to accept his grace and his mercy and his real presence in our lives. Let's pray. Lord, please be with Starry and her husband. Give her quick healing and thorough healing, Lord, to your glory. Give everyone wisdom as they care for her. Heal her neck, Lord, and help those bones to knit together strongly. Please be with her husband. I know this is very difficult for him. And Lord, I thank you for all that you are willing to give us, all the grace that you have to pour into our lives, just because of your love. And thank you for forgiving and not making us have to, to be punished like we deserve because of your mercy. Oh, Lord, please speak to our hearts your truth. Thank you for your word. Oh, my goodness, I'm so grateful for it. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.